What is going on people of the extranet? Tyler here with Random Automotive and today we're looking at the 2022 Toyota RAV4 and I'm going to give you five things that I really don't like about it just driving it as a daily driver. Now if you haven't checked out the last video I talk about five things I do like. Um, this is overall is a very good vehicle, very reliable vehicle, very solid vehicle. I wouldn't trade it in for these things but these are things that if automakers are listening heads up on this. So number five on the list of things that I don't like would be the lane tracing assist has a lot of room for improvement. It's really good when you use it, you just flick the switch on and it gives you that the LTA is turned on, steering assist is active. And basically you can let go of the wheel entirely and it'll keep you center in the line. It's not designed for that purpose, it's designed for you to hold the wheel, but then it keeps you center in the lane. The problem is, is in some cases, if you have a turn lane, the vehicle wants to drift that way and then you have to correct it and when you correct it it kind of pulls you the other way there's sometimes where it loses sight of the road without warning and it starts pulling you toward oncoming traffic and you got to pull to kind of correct it and when you pull there's a chance you could auto correct i'm not sure that there's ever been a wreck that's caused by that but that's one thing that we got to watch with this and make sure that we're, we're wary of because it's not it's a good feature to help but it's kind of a hindrance too Number four on the list, I would say, and it's a Toyota, so they're known for reliability and they don't want to venture out too much to create all this extra stuff. But for the price point, there's a couple of things that I have complaints about. And it's mainly one in the gauge cluster screen. Yeah, I know hybrid models get a bigger screen, but I mean, this little like four inch screen is something that's been around since 2016. And I feel like they could do a little bit better with that. I know I'm nitpicking and I know it's less things to break and I do agree with that. Um, but I feel like that's an area of improvement. The next area of improvement is kind of the same thing. The infotainment system, while it's good and they're changing some things with like Android Auto being able to do Bluetooth, this model can't do that where some 2018, 2019 cars can. And just overall, this, if no, this infotainment system, while it's improved, is still rather 2017 looking. Number three on the list is kind of a nitpicking thing too, the way that Toyota does their features. So this has the all weather package. It gives me the heated steering wheel, which is very nice, very warm in the, uh, on the sides only, the top and bottom aren't heated. I understand why they don't want you driving like I do, like this all the time. I get that, that's not the complaint. Um, and it gives you the heated seats, it gives you the uh, auto wipers, things like that, which are nice, but you can't a la carte the features. If you want just heated seats, ordering it, you have to get the whole package deal. It's kind of like I wanted the rear power uh, lift gate, but you had to get a sunroof too, and it's like, can you not just pick one or the other, especially if you're gonna build the vehicle? I feel like you should be able to pick your options a little bit better, but I understand packages make money and that's why they wanna do it. Number two is just a basic concern of mine. It's not even really a concern. It's just, you know, the, the vehicle is built very well. It's a tough vehicle. It's gonna last a long time. It can take a beating. It can take some damage in the front and keep you safe. It's leather stitched dashboard. It's quiet in here. But the one thing that Toyota does, I mean, can we not do better of a horn than that? It sounds like I'm driving a 2005 Suzuki like in Japan or something. I, you know, and I don't know, the Corolla did this too, and I actually saw videos where people were replacing the horns in them, and I don't know, I just don't get it. I mean, I know it's a it's a stupid concern and probably not going to phase you whatsoever, but I don't know, for this price point, I feel like they should do just a little bit better with that. The last thing that I really don't like about this Toyota, and this is my number one pet peeve, is the auto start stop feature. You can see you can turn it off. And I understand that the concept of auto start stop, I'm not the kind of person that says this damages your starter, et cetera. And I don't know if I can get it to replicate the problem. I'm gonna back up a little bit. And that's another thing, the, the backup camera has guidance lines, but they don't move. I mean, cars have been doing that since 2014. You think they could do it a little bit better than that. The problem that I run into, and I'm gonna roll forward a little bit here and stop, and then I'm gonna put the car in park. It didn't do it that time. But what it does sometimes is when I go on a long drive and I pull in my driveway, I'll put the car in park. The auto start stop feature will kick in with the vehicle in park. It'll turn the vehicle off, but then realizes it's in park and it starts right back up. So it's kind of silly to be sitting in a parking lot or anywhere and the car just shuts off and it immediately starts back on. That feels like something that they need to improve on if they're going to put this system in a vehicle to the point that you can't really disable it. Yes, you can. The problem with that is, though, is when you disable it, you turn the car off, you turn the car back on, 
give it just a second and you have to do it again so one make it to where you can permanently leave it off and number two make it to where if you just stop temporarily it doesn't just shut the engine off and then restart it immediately it's one thing if i pull in a parking spot and it just shuts off that's okay it's not a big deal but don't make it that seems like that's going to create more wear and tear on your starter in, in the long run making you having to replace it so those are five things that I don't like about the 2022 Toyota RAV4. There are a lot of things I do like about it, and that's just kind of nitpicking. If you want to see a full review on this car, let me know. I'll be sure to post one and make one. It has about 3,200 miles on it currently, and uh, we'll do that for you guys. But until next time, make sure you subscribe. Check out the video about the things I do like. And until next time, we'll catch you in the next one.